Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to call a meeting of the school committee, the Bedford Vocational School Committee to get order. Okay, anyone who wishes to record or photograph the meeting must first notify the chair, who will then inform the public for Massachusetts Social Meeting Law, July 2010. Such audio and video recording may not interfere with the meeting. This will be broadcast on www.youtube.com.br um, vocational technical high school. Comments are welcome during the public comment section. Please forward comments to the recording secretary and the rear cadet at greater than the tech.edu no later than 3 p.m. on Monday, July 19th, 2021. The time the regular meeting at greater than the vocational technical high school will be held. 6.30. Please stand for the salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of the States, one nation, under God, invisible law, liberty, and justice. Thank you. Before we do the roll call, thank you. All back in open session again. I just like to take a moment to recognize and welcome leaders and members of the teachers organization, Ready to Prepare Educators Association, to our first official open meeting after COVID. As we start a new school year with new superintendent director, new principal of Educators Association, it is my sincere hope that the collective and collaborative efforts of all by our student body with a strong and challenging curriculum needed in this fast paced and ever changing workforce. So, as I say, welcome. I would like to say thank you for those for your past efforts and look forward to working with you to provide the students with the best possible education. For attending. This time, Maria, would you do the roll call? Mr. Jonathan? Yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, Sarah? Here. Rivera? Here. Marlon? Here. Okay. Reading and notice of the minutes of the meeting. Second. Okay. Made a second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Opposed? So voted. On public comments. Have we received any public comments? Did not. No public comments to be held tonight. Okay, reading acceptance of the minutes of the June 8th, 2021 meeting. Make a motion to accept the meeting the meetings of the June 8th meeting. Motion is made. Second. Second and on the question. Second on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. We also need a vote now to approve the executive board meeting, executive committee minutes. So we approve one. Thank you. Motion made and seconded on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay, moving right along to reports. I'm moving fast here. Approval of bills. Motion would be in order to approve the bills as presented. So moved. Second. Made. Seconded. On the question. Question on the bills. Parts. Being none. Motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. At this time, I would ask the superintendent to introduce a new principal and a new director of human relations. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, members, uh, teachers, staff, it uh, gives me great pleasure to open up the July session with uh, the introduction of our new principal, Mr. Wally Williams, uh, who began his work here on July 1st. He has hit the ground running, which is fantastic. He's met with all academic department heads, career vocational uh, administrators as we begin to chart the, the next school year. Uh, there's much work to be done over the summer. He is uh, effectively taking two jobs in the past and combining them into one. Uh, it has been a privilege to see him hit the ground running in the first three weeks. I'm really excited with a lot of the ideas and things he's brought forth to the table. Uh, very proud of the, the position that he's accepted. Very proud of the work that he's done in the first few weeks uh, on the job and looking forward to some really uh, exciting things for Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech and staff and student bodies under his leadership as principal of the school. Uh, equally important is uh, behind me is 
Nancy Markey, who is our new human resources director. Uh, Nancy comes to us with more than 20 years experience as a human resources director in both the public and private sector uh, schools. Based. She is a lawyer. She has an extensive background. She, I've watched her firsthand in some meetings with our insurance companies. She's worked collaboratively with Pam Stewart on employee handbook ad addresses. She's looked at the contracts, both the proposals and the current draft that will be before you tonight. Um, very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, I believe she's going to be a tremendous asset to the school, to us being able to continue our work and move forward uh, this decade. And so I am ecstatic with the, the additions of both Mr. Williams and Ms. Markey. Uh, to the team. I'd also like to use the opportunity to uh, speak to Mr. Watt, who has assumed the new role as executive director of operations and compliance. Uh, Bob is looking at a lot of the things that sometimes get put on the on the back burner, the NEAS report implementation, uh, naming the one, the electronic evaluation system, which we're going to move towards this year. He is going to help to spearhead a lot of those issues and make sure that the work that we put forth is, is being implemented. That involves us thinking and supporting teachers, administrators, and folks to carry out that work. Um, I think Bob has both the spirit, uh, knowledge, the institution to be able to help assist in implementing that work. So I look forward to him and, and thank him publicly for embracing a new role for the district. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Mrs. Fredette publicly, uh, who didn't necessarily expect this, uh, but Maria has plenty of vacation time to use and has chosen it to use it on the sparing days that I'm able to use mine, uh, which uh, is... Uh, a real blessing, Maria. And so I'm deeply appreciative of that. And I know privately we've had this conversation, but I want to say it publicly. Uh, my first weeks on the job have been much easier because you're at the desk anytime that I need you to be there. And so I'm grateful uh, to everybody in the room, to the committee, as we start the work planning for the next school year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are there any questions of the superintendent in regards to the new positions? Question, Mr. Again, I think it's nice to, you know, bring back someone who, who has known our school. Has, uh, and I have talked many times, but I, I see his passion. I think you know he's going to do a great job. I have no, no disbelief in you. I think we all believe in you. I think the staff believes in you. You have a great reputation. Ms. Mackey, it's nice to meet you tonight, and I've heard only positive things from everyone. So, welcome on board, both of you. But I think it's bringing something to the school. We need right now. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Would uh, you like to, any comments you'd like to make from opening statements? <laughs> well, sure. I mean, to be quite honest, this is probably the hallmark of my career. Be, being able to lead the school that is my alma mater. This is my 20th year since I've graduated. This will be my 20th year. Um, and it is just remarkable what I come back to after having been gone for two years. Um, seeing the students come in for summer school freshman orientation, it reminds me of what I love about this place. Uh, the vocational education, the students, the staff, and I'm just, I feel so blessed to be a leader here at the school. And I just want to carry on the vision and the mission that we can take Great and Beth and Bill Tech to the next level. It's an absolute blessing and I'm totally grateful for it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. I remember you as a student, Mr. Williams, and my teaching days, and I remember you as a uh, middle administrator. Did an excellent job at that time, and I'm sure you carry on doing the same type of work. Ms. Maki, do you have any statements or anything you'd like to say? To no, I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity. I've only been here two weeks, but um, everybody I've met has been wonderful. It's an amazing facility, and I, I have worked in Votech schools before, but this is like a phenomenal program. I, I'm so impressed with not only the programs here, but the employees that are here. And how many people went to school here and how many people are from the area, it's, it, it speaks well to the environment here. I look forward to meeting the teachers in a more formal, I guess, or informal way, working with you closely. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from any of the other members of the board? All been said. So happy to be here. Sure. <laughs> Good luck this year. To the uh, staff that are here, happy to have you. Really appreciate the hard work you guys have done, especially over this last year. It's been uh, 
dialogue that you've had, and I don't want to say it. We've all talked about it. It's 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 incredible, and we really appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. It's especially grateful to see an open public meeting. Also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Give me no other comments. We'll move on to uh, parent communications. Mr. Superintendent Watson, would you? Thank you, Mr. Toomey. So in your packets again are the uh, last POSIP surveys. As you may remember, every other week, beginning in September, the district sent POSIP surveys out to all parents uh, and stakeholders to get feedback. Um, so we do have an end of year report that has been compiled in addition to the staff uh, comprehensive school climate survey that was sent to staff, families and students. Um, ideally, I would have liked to have seen greater participation. It, it unfortunately happened at the back end of a very difficult year. Uh, staff participated. There were and Mr. Pius can correct me on the numbers. Um, north of 150 or so um, uh, staff members that participated, but slightly more than 200 families. Um, and students, so really a 10, 15 percent um, threshold for kids and, and parents. So we got some good feedback. Um, I did speak to Jeff Lawrence, who helped us steer this uh, over the weekend, email back and forth, quick conversation about digging a little bit deeper into the data to get some pinpoints on the numbers. As you look at the bar graphs, you can see that there's not a great deal of change in the different categories between how staff perceive the, the issue or students or families. Uh, but that work is going to become part of the blueprint as we build the new strategic district improvement plan for the district starting this fall. Uh, so we've got some work to do on the existing plan. Uh, it is going to be part of the new superintendent induction program, which I began last week uh, in Mashpee. Uh, so that I am meeting with my mentor at the end of the month. So we'll be starting to put that process in place for the fall. We'll be keeping the committee and the staff regularly updated around that work. Uh, we will be engaging all stakeholder groups in the formation the new district strategic plan, seeing that's going to guide the work for all of us uh, beginning next summer in 2022 and running through 2025. Um, and I just want the committee to know that this document right here and the results of this document will become part of that blueprint for those discussions with all of the uh, state. Are there any questions of Superintendent Watson? No questions. Uh, motion being be an audit approved. Well, yeah. Made and seconded. Another question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Superintendent Watson, uh, Dem Equipment Grant. Looking forward to your report, Sarah. Shortly, this will take it off me and put it on you. <laughs> the uh, the STEM Equipment Report again. Big thanks to Alan Duart, Aaron Wallace, Atkinson, and Joy Southworth for their work. Uh, on this STEM grant and Pam's assistance in a lot of those details with the grant team. Uh, they did secure a grant of $51,533. Much of that will be used in our biotechnology program. Uh, it's being used to fund old equipment and replace that with state-of-the-art equipment. It will also be used in our human body systems and botany classes, which are also senior elective courses um, in science. So we're able to take this money and apply it to a lot of our senior um, science courses for kids. Uh, those folks are doing a terrific job upstairs, did a terrific job in a virtual environment last year for much of the year, but in person, hopefully, when we come back uh, this year, that is, th those classes have been fantastic for kids who are looking to explore different, different career paths. So very grateful to the team in helping to secure those additional funds. Those funds are going to help us to be able to buy supplies and replace equipment and that education for kids this year. Are there any questions of Superintendent Watson? That's a STEM grant. Should be an honor to approve. Motion made and second. On the question, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Sarah, you get the floor. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone. Um, this is my student report for the month of June and July. So, first off, the students were all issued their summer reading and their summer work, like math and things like that, to get done um, over the summer. Um, recently, Alexander de Cruz, who was just a uh, 2021 graduate, he placed um, first for the GMBBT Athletic Award for the MIA State and Track State Track and Field Championship. So that was really cool. Um, also, on July 3rd, Jennifer Racine was announced a new varsity girls soccer coach. So that was really exciting for most of the girls. They're all very excited to um, welcome Ms. Racine as their new coach. 
Uh, also, fall sport registration is now open for the new season. And, and also, Dr. Larkin is starting on the National Honor Society induction ceremony for the now seniors who were the juniors um, last year, which it is being planned to be on October 19th. Um, so that'll be really fun for the seniors and the new juniors that are going to be um, in the National Honor Society. So it'll be nice to get that induction ceremony. Um, also, the last thing is Dr. Larkin is also trying to rally up some seniors, juniors, and even some sophomores to help um, with Freshman Orientation Day to help volunteer and help just guide the new freshmen and even their parents on um, Freshman Parent Orientation Day um, around the school and just help them feel more familiar. That is my student report for the month of June and July. Thank you. Any questions of Sarah? Make a motion to receive and place on the file. Mm -hmm. made. We have second. Yeah. Those in favor? So, so voted. Okay. The old business. Uh, moving right along. We have the second reading and adoption of amendment to the vocation. Vocate, yeah. Vacation rollover policy. Motion would be an honor to we adopt this policy. Motion to set up a vacation rollover policy. It's read. Motion is made and seconded on the question. Anything on the question? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay. Superintendent Watson, here we go again. <laughs> you only got a quick break. Discussion on okay. equity, diversity, and inclusion. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. So last month um, I provided uh, to the committee kind of a list of potential responsibilities that we're considering uh, around the position of equity, diversity, inclusivity, and family engagement. Today I wanted to give you a chance for, to have some public comment around that with me, give me some feedback on that, but I also wanted to let you know that we are moving towards this being crafted in a physical job description. And so that's what's before you in draft form. Uh, today, I do envision the plan currently is to bring a final draft proposal to you in three weeks, August 10th, for approval. Uh, this position is being funded out of the Student Opportunity Act, which we've been clear about from the get-go, uh, which is expected to be funded over the next seven years. Over the course of those seven years, obviously, I don't envision that this work is going to become any less important over the next seven years. We will be strategizing for how to fund that position through different cost-saving and resource allocation measures. Uh, to take effect when that happens, similar to what we did with some of the uh, English positions we added through the resource radar resource reallocation grant two years ago. Uh, the seed money is planted up front, and over the course of the time of that time, we look for other ways that we can uh, make sure that that funding is sustainable over a longer period of time. So you'll notice that the title for this position is still under consideration. This was a big topic for us uh, last week statewide at the Mass Superintendent Conference. Um, I did have the opportunity to speak with several folks who have begun this work. Um, I believe we are still at the front of this um, and not behind. This is this is the moment for these conversations to happen statewide. Um, I don't think most districts are in a position to necessarily fund this today. Some have. Um, I've engaged in conversations with those school leaders around that. Those conversations are ongoing and continuing. In a few weeks, uh, I'll have some district leadership folks with me at the MAVA annual retreat the first week of August. This topic will again uh, be, be front and center. So that'll be the week before um, we present the final draft to you. Um, but I did include the qualifications we are currently considering, and I'd like for you to review uh, that, provide feedback to me over the next few weeks, <clears throat> things that I think are important, as well as experience uh, in that in the equity, diversity, and cultural change initiatives, um, as well as the 29 or 30 items that are currently under consideration for the job description. Um, this is really important work, not only for Greater New Bedford Folk Tech, but us state. Um, and I want to have someone on the team that is focused around this work, not only for staff retention or staff recruitment, but for students. Someone who can assist us in digging into some of the information and the data that I know that we're doing a good job in, 
but I know there are opportunities for us to do better. And so uh, putting someone specific in that role is, is kind of paramount to making sure that the district is not only saying what it needs to be doing, but acting on what it needs to do. Um, and so I believe this is an important first step uh, for, us to, for us to make. So I wanted to present, I didn't want to leave you last month with the responsibilities without you seeing that this is moving in the direction of a job description and to give you a timeline that I expect to have a formal job description in front of you in three weeks. Yeah, I don't believe there's any action needed on this. It's presented to us for review. Uh, to be presented at the next meeting. Move on to the next one. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to say how appreciative I am. Right now. We've had numerous yeah. discussions on this issue. This is going to be a much needed position in the building. Uh, a lot of work has gone into it, and I just want to appreciate it. I appreciate that, Mrs. Ribeiro, and uh, I, I wish that I was already completed it and we'd have the person on board. But as I said to you privately, and I'll say publicly, this is so important that we have to get this right. Uh, and so we've taken time. Uh, I assure everyone on the committee that this is part of the weekly conversations that I'm having with members of the team. We are not. This isn't passing month to month on the meeting. We are. We are working very hard to try and get this that it, it meets what we need. I appreciate the comments and uh, I look forward to final approval of this in just a few weeks. Any other questions? Okay, moving right along. Uh, vote to establish admissions subcommittee to the school committee. Okay, basically what this is, we need to establish a ad hoc or subcommittee to look at the new criteria and Admissions policies that the state is going to be mandating. As of yet, Mr. Watson will enlighten you in a few minutes. Uh, we have not received any direct communications as to what the admissions requirements will be. And with that, uh, I'll ask Mr. Watson to discuss a little bit about the policy and what we need. Uh, basically, need to get a subcommittee that he's going to put together. We need three people to serve on this committee. Be asking for volunteers after Mr. Watson. You mean three school committee people? Yes. I'd like to send the committee. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, so just a quick uh, up summary, and like some of the other things I've mentioned, this is obviously a top priority for us. It has not been a quiet uh, summer by any stretch of the imagination. So um, the regulations approved by the Board of Education late June we are still awaiting a guidance document from the Department of Education around uh, ideas for implementing this. There are web there are webinars and office hours that are scheduled at the end of the month, members of the commissioner's office to help support um, this work. This is going to be a very different process for us. And uh, while the regulations are due in October, the, the policy setting uh, rests with the school committee. So it will ultimately be your decision. Um, I have participated in several uh, ABTE advisory, CBTE advisory calls with the commissioner's office. Pretty much every time there is one, I, I'm either on it myself or I've asked Bob uh, to, to be part of those calls so that we, we are at the table. This is item number two. It's really the primary item of the MAVA retreat uh, for vocational uh, administrators. Uh, Dr. Larkin handles the admissions for us. Uh, she is working with several folks um, uh, to craft an admissions policy. That will be part of the subcommittee. I've asked Mr. Pius and Mr. Perry to work on the public relations and the data analysis around that. Uh, so these these folks are going to be part of, of the committee to, to kind of analyze what options are before us to look at an admissions policy that makes sense to bring to you guys in September or October uh, for final approval. If additional time is needed, Associate Commissioner Shane has uh, indicated that that would be granted, provided that no acceptances uh, for the class of 2026. Is that right? Twenty uh, next next September um, would take effect um, until that happens. So it's clear to me the message from the department is no acceptances uh, beyond the classes coming in September until there is a new there is an admissions policy approved by the local school. Uh, several issues uh, will need to be discussed with the subcommittee. I will be part of those discussions about steps that we may need to consider taking um, as this unfolds publicly. This is not a this is not a private conversation that'll just happen at the school committee. The, the New Bedford Regeneration Committee, I was on a conference call with them a few weeks ago. There are several members of that team that uh, 
support different positions around what vocational education uh, admission processes should look like. Um, I've offered to meet with them. I've had several meetings with some of those folks. And so uh, this is definitely going to be part of uh, the next 60 or 90 days of kind of an ongoing dialogue about what this should look like. Uh, but we should make no bones about the fact that this will require a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of careful uh, consideration about what the policy should look like here. Mr. Watson, you had mentioned something about other people on board besides the school committee members. Could you enlighten us on that? Yeah, so we'll we'll certainly have some some folks from the administrative team that are there. Um, there have been some community members who have indicated uh, that they'd also like to be part of that. I think that's a conversation we should have uh, with members of the subcommittee of the school committee. In my view, I'll take the same approach. But I think we should be inclusive to that process. I think we should hear from members of the community who, who wish to weigh in on that. Um, we need to be careful not to, it needs to be a balanced approach, right? We have to be able to hear from people who, who see uh, vocational education through lots of different lenses. That's That's the way forward. We don't want the committee to be uh, one sided or the other, because I don't think that that it represents the views that exist. And this is uh, it's widespread. There are views on both sides of this that have to be carefully considered. So uh, I did offer to meet. I haven't heard back from the regeneration committee uh, individually, but I did offer to hold specific sessions with them one on one if, if that was something that the committee was looking for. Are there any questions of Mr. Watson regarding this? Subcommittee. <clears throat> Okay, so Mr. Durrigan has volunteered. I will be on this subcommittee. I'm looking for one more volunteer. I think either, you know, one of the office representatives would love to be on it. I, I haven't talked to her. Let's see what her schedule is or my schedule is, but if I can talk to, you know, uh, Cindy afterwards, I'd be glad to get, say one of us would love to be on it. Say if I have in Bedford and one of us would be love to stay on it. So before I I'd volunteer myself or her, <laughs> you could. Uh, she's retired. <laughs> I'm not used to the whole retired from one one job. So, so we'll talk maybe right afterwards, Cindy, and and I think Diamond should be on this committee. So one of them on okay, thank you. Further discussion on this motion be in order to accept the establishment of the subcommittee. Motion be made. We have a second. Second. A second. And further in the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, so voted. Okay. Mr. Watson. So um, will there be any kind of professional development or seminars or different things so that you get more information? On admissions? Yes. Um, so we've received two of the four promised guidance documents. Um, I, I did articulate through MAVA uh, to Executive Director Sherrick uh, and the president who's asking <laughs> Uh, that my disappointment exists around the fact that all four guidance documents were released at the same time, right? So I, I certainly understand the department is ceding to the local authorities to make the admissions decisions. That said, uh, it also feels like the absence of those documents being released at the same time is prolonging our work to be able to get out in front of it and shortening the time frame for us to be able to get something done. Um, and I want this to be a pretty thoughtful process. And I'll also say public diaspora's forget to reach out to the mayor's office last week. Uh, so that I could have lunch with him. Uh, we haven't heard back yet from the mayor's office, but um, I'm hopeful that we will uh, so that we continue to build that dialogue around what this should look like and what his vision for that may be um, as well. So I don't have an answer to the question about what, what that will look like because we don't know what the full guidance document is. Uh, there are going to be office hours and, and sort of open talk with the department. I have spoken to Dr. Lockett about signing up for one or many of those. They often, you can come to as many as you want. Uh, if there are questions about what we can answer as we start to think about what those internal changes may be for this school. <clears throat> That's the most current information I have. Finally, I'll also mention on August 5th, um, up in Devon's uh, Commissioner Riley, Associate Commissioner uh, Cliff Schwain, they will be present, Liz Bennett, uh, all there and available for questions. And so I intend to take the comments I've made today directly to them uh, at that moment and, and hopefully get some some clearer guidance around uh, what it is that they're, they're looking for us to be able to do. Cliff made a point at the meeting uh, that with the city, with the towns, that it's going to require both parties to sort of hold hands and jump in the deep end. Uh, and I said to him, I'm ready. 
to do that, right? So my hand is out, I'm just wait for somebody to grab it and jump in the deep end with me. So, um, and that's a comment I intend to convey to the mayor and to other folks I've shared it already with some of the New Bedford city council members that I've met with. So uh, we're gonna need to be collaborative in this process. And so I'm willing to do that. See where it takes us hopefully in a few weeks and I can keep the committee regularly priced of about what we're doing. That is a higher agenda on the Mass Association School Committee's uh, thing in Harlem, and unfortunately, it's after, it's after the fact. It's after the fact. That's typical. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, it is after the fact. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, moving right along, uh, appointment of a school nurse. So, so the school nurse position is appointed by the school committee. It's one of a few positions that the school committee appoints for the district. So we're asking the school committee to um, appoint Carol Rossi to the position of school nurse, um, subject to uh, contract negotiations, which um, I will talk with her on your behalf tomorrow. Yeah. In order to accept Carol Rossi, <laughs> we'll make that motion. Motion is made. We have a second. Second. Made a second. Further on the questions. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Mr. Toomey, he skipped over item A, the authorization of the treasurer to borrow. Yes, I did. Sorry about that. That's okay. Can you we uh, just go back um, and right. make the motion to authorize the treasurer to borrow from time to time? Okay. Motion made. We have a second. Okay. On the question. Those in favor? Opposed? So voted. Sorry about that. Wrapped up. All right, moving right along. A technology. Mr. Pius. Thank you. Um, just wanted to give you a little uh, rundown of what the technology team has been up to um, the last two years, but in particularly the, um, the last last year so i handed out a few uh, documents out uh, highlighting the amount of work that they've done um, so uh, it was dated august 11th to june uh, 16th within that time frame uh, they completed 3165 technology tickets in 309 days um, since implementing this new ticketing system, we, we can track as what kind of jobs are being completed. And so it really gives us a lot of data. And really, you know, they deserve the credit uh, for the work that they've completed. 3,000 tickets that were submitted. That also includes students as well. Not only were we supporting teachers, but now the ticketing system is accessible by students. Uh, we also imp uh, implemented a new inventory system. Anything that district purchase purchases uh, will have an asset tag. Uh, anything that leaves the room, our technology room, uh, will have that asset tag. And we know who has which device, which peripheral. It's all tracked through the asset tag inventory. So right now we have a, over a little over 4,000 pieces of equipment in our inventory system, and we are going to perform an audit throughout the building uh, to see what's already out there since the start of this new system. Um, some quick highlights, we've replaced our core and access switches throughout the building. Uh, essentially, that is the heart of our network. We've increased our internet speeds in and out of the building. We've replaced our indoor wireless system. Uh, it allows us to have 2,100 Chromebooks that students have, the faculty, staff, laptops that we have, and their cell phones, all on wireless networks. We also have a backup to our data backup, which is our off-site data backup. Uh, in case something happened in-house, uh, if there was a data breach, uh, we always have the off-site backup. We've installed vape detectors in all bathrooms. Um, one of the biggest projects was um, replacing the 40 plus year old phone system. Uh, COVID 
kind of set us back a little bit just because of closure and delays in hardware. But um, we were able to replace all our phones with a voice over IP system that is tied in with the WebEx meeting, calling, and messaging for all faculty and staff. Uh, we moved to a Chromebook one-to-one -one initiative, and we've completed it. We currently have over 20, uh, 2,800 Chromebooks on hand, ready to go. Uh, the freshmen began their testing placement tests this week. They're already receiving their Chromebooks. So we already planned last year to have it ready for this summer. Normally they get it, well, well this year they ended up getting it really late just because of the hardware shortage. Uh, we've also uh, implemented uh, eFacts. So we moved away from the, the traditional copper faxing capabilities and um, we're now going to eFacts. We've also moved to e-signing documents, um, mostly used in the co-op office. It makes um, signing documents a, um, a co-op site, a student and teacher a lot easier. Electronic forms, another big push. All forms are now on Aspen, accessible to students, parents, um, and just throughout the building, in-house with teachers. Uh, so it really has cut down on the, the amount of people that we use. Uh, we've also implemented IT remote support. So instead of actually interrupting a classroom, we can help a teacher remotely without disrupting the teaching and learning process. Uh, we also moved to a new printing initiative uh, with the workroom printers. We had, we were troubleshooting about 300 printers. We're now down to 25. So when the cost of printing was, was out of control, the amount of paper, um, it, was, it was a large expense for the district. So we've now, moved work group printers to central locations in the building that allows students to print to them uh, and teachers as well. Now with Google Classroom, the need of printing in, in the academic wing has really decreased. Uh, some of the printing shops uh, will, well, technology and printing shops will continue to have a printer in their classrooms, but for most areas, we've, uh, we've centralized our work printers. So that's kind of a, that's kind of what we've done in this past year. Uh, some of the projects that we're leading into for the uh, upcoming school year is uh, we need to replace our in-house data backup. Um, it's on its last leg. That's why there was a push to go offsite so that we can replace our in-house data backup. Uh, the electronic valuation, we're on our final steps to put that online. Um, 100% participation with e-hall pass. So we've gone away from the paper passes and now there's more documentation of where students are. There's more accountability on the students, where they're supposed to be, how long they're taking. Um, so that's, again, I, I believe that is the uh, future for uh, education when it comes to the traditional hall pass. Uh, another thing that we're going to see some funding on is uh, translating documents. We will have an in-house document translator uh, that does it electronically. Um, that's that's definitely um, something that's in the works. Uh, another project is the surveillance system refresh project. Uh, we're having some issues with our current system and that needs to be addressed. Um, the, uh, replace outdated computers in many of the vocational programs. We were on a four year plan, four to six year plan, uh, and, and the district kind of stopped doing that. So a lot of the computers will be replaced. This year's main target is engineering. So we've just purchased 66 computers for that program. The computers that they currently have cannot handle the software that the students need to use. So that is a priority. And then there's other shops, for example, uh, you know, media, visual, that's uh, that's definitely in the works, but uh, they can still the students can still use the software required in that curriculum with the equipment they, that they currently have. Um, but more importantly, I just want to you know want to thank the school committee administration for your support, uh, and and I really want to thank the following people 
part of the team who it was a difficult year for the technology team and we were we were pulled in many directions um you know i want to you know thank the teachers for their support their patience um there was a lot of change it was it was just a challenging year for all of us so i just want to thank donna lebrec vanessa cardozo joshua trepania patrick kudo jay viera al lima we had part-time help with uh, ben blanchett colin walker and an intern william serpa without that team i don't know where we where we would be right now uh, it was it was definitely a trying time but it's been a i'm very thankful for all those individuals who who had the skill set patience the drive uh, who, who believe in the core values to push our district where it needs to be. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Pines or any comments? Just one quick one. On the, you talked about the translator like electronically. Yeah, so it's a, it's a server that will just push documents through that system and it'll just, um, it'll, it'll translate it to whatever doc, uh, language it needs to be. It's more sophisticated than Google Translator. A lot of other districts are using it. It's something that we've lacked in the last couple of years. I want to also say just uh, to me that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marcio, but uh, Mare was here today as well uh, with student IDs for freshmen. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with a target goal. So that's been an issue for a long time is that freshmen don't get their IDs for well into the school year. So we are optimistic, Mr. Williams and Mr. Pies, correct me, that a freshman will have. Uh, IDs on day one. Uh, so that is a really significant step forward for us. Um, and it involved a lot of coordination with Mr. Williams, Mr. Pius, Mr. Angelo around that. And so uh, next month, I'll give you an update on the work that the teams are doing small, but uh, that's one example of what I was saying at the outset, how proud I am for them embracing the work right from day one to make a meaningful change that I think is going to be well received by the staff, well received by kids and allow us to hit the ground running. So very proud uh, of that work too. I just want to add, uh, thank Ms. Uh, Sudeberg's yeah, Sudeberg. for the rollover of the yeah. data because that is usually taken care of at the end of the year. But the collaboration with Jay Vieira and Sudeberg's, uh, they made it possible that we now have the data for freshmen. Any other comments, questions? Okay, thank you. So is, the students have the Chromebooks. When they take them home, is there any are there any issues with connectivity from the homes? And do you provide like hotspots? Yes. Um, so, yeah. So this year we ended up. Uh, I ended up applying for a grant through T-Mobile that allowed us to have 340 hotspots and no cost for the district. So unlimited data. We did spend some money with some hotspots in the beginning of uh, the remote hybrid learning. Um, they weren't they weren't the best hotspots, and we paid some some good money through Verizon and a company called Kaji, which a lot of districts were just desperate for hotspots when this all happened. Um, it, that's what was available to us. But moving forward, uh, yes, if any student needs accessibility um, to internet, connect a Chromebook, we do have the hotspots, and they've been issued. We work closely with the guidance department. If there's a, if there's a need to help students. Any questions, comments? Mr. Pius, the one question or uh, one point. You mentioned the fact that the students working with you I think it's important for the committee to understand. Could you give us a little input as to what the students do and how they work collectively yeah. with you? These problem solve problem solving issues? Yes, the teacher there at one time. So. Right. So um, that was that's definitely one of my goals. But because of COVID and not allowing students out of the classroom to work with other students and other teachers, they were kind of contained in their um, in their classroom. But the the goal is to move forward and bring back the students to job shadow the technicians and have the students work throughout the building, some sort of a internship co op program. Uh, so that they have the credentials required uh, to work in our department. First of all, that was important to be brought out because I know Mr. Pius worked on that for years. Yeah, I became a team director. 
and it's a great experience for students. So I believe it's uh, it's worthwhile um, to to give students that opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, motion be in order to accept this report. So moved. Motion made. Seconded. And further on the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Still vote. Um, we have a uh, vote that does make equipment a surplus. Motion to approve. Motion made. Second. Second. Seconded to approve the uh, designated equipment as surplus. All those in favor? Opposed? So voted. At this time, I'd like to take item F and uh, take it out of order. Motion be in order to take this out of order and put it after we have our executive session. This is basically to ratify the contract between the Great Investment Regional Vocational Technical School District and the Educators Association. Motion to take the uh, item out of order. Second. Motion to second on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. We will be coming back after the executive session to do this and vote on it. Uh, at this time, we report on personnel appointments, retirements. And we have early notifications, notification of resignation. Receive the case on file. Second. Those in favor? Opposed? So voted. On the communications, we have a Informational notice from uh, Norris Murray and Bellaquin. We'll see our attorneys that they're going up on their rates, which is do that only $5 an hour. Motion that we accept the uh, notice of increase of rate to two twenty five. dollars Okay, it's, motion is made. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Voted. Any discussions? Any discussions? Anybody have anything to still say? No. Well, I talk about it. I know it was brought up earlier. Uh, Randy mentioned that it was great to have an open meeting here. And you know, last year, I mean, I've been in education for 40 years, and being outside the circle and having seven grandchildren and teachers and principal and my family, it, it was a hell of a year. It was, it was everything. It was that it was after the main meeting, but June meeting kind of thanked everybody over Zoom, looking at the camera and talking, which is kind of strange anyway. And I hope I never have a Zoom meeting again. I've done it. But you know, thanked everybody and and probably came out too late. It came out because there's a lot that went on during the year that I and I'm speaking for myself as school committee, because I don't speak at others that, you know, tough time doing a contract when you have a contract and, and try to look at what's up for renegotiations rather than starting. And between that and the pandemic, I have a couple of grandchildren that really have some you know, anxiety issues. I have parents that I know. So I looked at myself and reevaluated myself this year at the end of the year and, and what can I do myself as a better husband, better parent, better grandparent, and a better school team. I, I think when I said thank you, you know, what we're the Zoom meetings. I wanted to say it to you people. I wanted, you know, and sometimes people say it's too late. Some people just say about time. Some people just say, well, we'll move forward. And looking at the contract, I read every word of it. I, I, I know it's hard. And I, the only experience I had was when I went to the back, I walked right into the middle of it. When I went to Diamond, I walked right into the middle of it. And I could see, you know, shoulders tight and everything. But, but I hope right now the lessons that I've learned. You know, maybe other committee members learned that, you know, we all are here for kids and, and I'm looking forward to better years. I'm looking forward to be a better person. And I think that is part of accepting what other people do that I don't know they do. So I, I just wanted to, as a comment, I, I, I love this committee. I think we all share it and I socialize with some of these people and, and I know where their heart is. But sometimes the heart is here. It doesn't come out sometimes. And so I apologize for that for me. Um, I respect every one of you. 
I respect even the people that did not do a great job because of whatever reason they were going through. It wasn't a year to look back and say, yeah, that was a great year. Oh, we have another one of those. Um, and we're not done yet, you know, to return to it. But I feel strong. I, I, I swear to God, I, I done my, my soul searching that this committee is strong. I think the leadership is strong, and sometimes leadership gets guilty by association. It gets because of what's past. So if we all can say, moving forward as of right now, as we can do, I give you my word, and I uh, uh, give you all the word of me because I know them. They want to do the best job they can, and we will make mistakes. You know, but we can communicate, work together. I have a full understand in Mike Watson. I've known Mike since he was five years old, waiting on a bus stop with my dog. You know, so we have a lot to learn. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm turning 69 this year. I'm almost at the big 7-0, and uh, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. But I think it's time for us to really don't worry about everything. I, I lost five classmates of mine since September 11th of last year. High school classmates, because I plan on my 50th reunion is 50 plus one this year. And uh, people that would have been there on September 12th last year will not be on September 11th this year because they passed away. Life is too short. So whatever we did, I did wrong. Not because I don't believe in you. It's not because of my heart. It's not because of what I feel. And sometimes it's just because I was stupid at that time and I don't realize it. So I look forward to work with everybody. I think the contract is moving forward, and I think all we got to do, whether it's good or bad, uh, I just I, I want to be on this committee because I, I I like working with Wayne Reed, you know, Cindy, I, all these people. So hope we all begin a good year this year. If there's anything I can do to listen, I'm available. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other comments, questions? Moving right along. <laughs> uh, any other business that may come before us this evening? Anybody have any business they wish to discuss? Any other business? We'll move right along. Uh, the executive session. Uh, the committee will be adjourning into executive session of Chapter 30, Section 21A to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the DNBEU. The discuss strategy with respect to bargaining with the BNBAU as the chair has determined that open meeting would be detrimental, have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the committee. Members will be returning to open session. Okay, we, the committee will be adjourning into a coffee shop. The audience just stay here if they so desire whatever, and we will be returning to open session. So at this time, at this time, I would ask Maria to take a roll call vote. Mr. Durgan? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Yes. Dr. Marlin? Yes. Yes. The coffee shop to
This time I would like to call the meeting back to order. We've concluded executive session. At this time, I would ask for a vote to ratify the contract between the Bethel Vocational Educators Association and the School Bethel Vocational High School School District. You want a motion? Yes, yes, I do. I'll make the motion to uh, ratify the, the agreement. Second. Motion made and second. On this good question, Mr. Watson, discussion. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, thank you, members of the committee. I wanted to take a few minutes tonight um, to just uh, personally thank all of you for your support through the process to thank the union leadership, uh, their co-chairs, members that are here um, as well. Uh, this is an important day for the future of the district in building a collaborative partnership uh, with teachers, with administrators, with the school committee, and the future of upgrading New Bedford Vote Tech. And so um, it's humbling, it's important, and I want us all to, to feel that moment. And so um, I've spoken with Mrs. Pimento and Mr. Meniz, and I want to invite them to the table. I would like uh, Ms. Gifford and Mr. Lopes, who are co-chairs, to also join them um, at the table as well. Um, let them get there. I'll, I'll just say that these processes are always difficult. There is nothing easy about trying to negotiate a contract. Uh, these four folks represented the teachers of this district very well throughout the process. And I know that there were difficult moments for them. There were difficult moments for us. Uh, this is never an easy thing to do. But we're in a moment tonight where I hope and I believe that the teachers are happy and have ratified the contract. Uh, district and the committee are happy with the contract. Uh, and this, this is the beginning of a step forward. And so I am humbled as the superintendent of this school uh, to have the committee sign, teachers leadership sign on behalf of this. And I look forward to building that partnership uh, between us as we move forward. And I know Mrs. Pimento wants to say some things as well. Um, I just want to take a minute to thank um, the negotiations team. Many of you um, don't know. You've met the four of us, uh, actually, you've met the two of us. Lynn um, Gifford has worked at Greater New Bedford Vote Tech for 20 years. Arminio has been there for 24. Henry Bousquet behind me, 15. Matt Keene has been there for 22. Ed Fregata, who's not here tonight, has been um, working with us for 24 years. Caitlin Roderick's not here, 12. Chris Silva, 31 years. She's our veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Coelho, 23 years. Dara Blanchett, not here, 14 years. Jillian Vaughn, not here, six years. And Shannon McGuire, seven. And it's just a testament to their dedication to this building. And they need to be acknowledged for the work and hours that they put into this. I'd just like to add that um, as uh, co president of the GMEU, um, see it as a uh, privilege to work with, with my uh, colleagues and represent them as a, as a executive board. And really, what it comes down to is we all love working with kids. And um, as Mr. Shea spoke earlier, there's a dedication that we all have to students. Um, I just urge you to remember that um, like, I'm a New Bedford kid, right? New Bedford made me, that's how I see it. That's what it is, it's my reality. And when I work here, I have a special affection for our New Bedford kids. And when we make our decisions, we have to think about the kid that's in front of us, who we know they can become. So our decisions really have to reflect what we believe our kids can become and how they can improve our communities. And again, I speak for New Bedford because that's where I, where I spent almost my entire life. And so uh, we have to do everything we can to make this a wonderful place for, for our kids. And um, again, it's wonderful to work with these folks. I'm not gonna lie to you, coming to a contract negotiation meeting is not a fun thing. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it's water under the bridge. We got it done. And I appreciate um, all the work that everyone put into that. Lastly, it's an example of those three words up there. All of the work done by the educators to help bring this contract forward. Preparation, passion, and perseverance. So we're proud of it. Oops. It was uh, 
pleasure uh, co-chairing this committee. It wasn't always easy, uh, some long nights, um, and I never took anything personal. Um, things get said in the heat of the moment sometimes, and um, it is what it is. We move forward, and uh, everybody's got a clean slate, and not broken. Uh, hmm. Let's see. It was a very think long. With students, very long and very different. Oh, I'm not nervous. I'm just trying to behave. Um, <laughs> it was a very long and very, uh, you know, kind of challenging. More than 12 months, I feel like, right? Yeah. Um, but thank God for these guys keeping me sane. Um, and I think we just need to remember, you know, a lot of times we say when we talk about kids, we want to do right by kids, but we need to do right by teachers too. And that's what this contract was really about, trying to make sure that we do right by teachers. So, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. What happens? I know it's difficult being on that side of the fence. I've been there before. I'm on this side of the fence. So <laughs> it's a difficult process. It's a time consuming process. It's an arduous process. So, I compliment you and thank you for your time and efforts and looking. Forward to a healthy relationship of upcoming years. I'm crying happy tears. <laughs> I've been here a long time and I love this school. I love this building. I love all the work that you really do here. It is truly appreciated. This has not been an easy process for everybody. But, um, excuse me. It's, oh, it's okay. It's good. It's just a happy moment because it's done. And I know it's for the good of everybody in here and your hard work, believe it or not, that sometimes people feel like they're not appreciated, but you are appreciated. We have the best school anywhere around in the state. I love what we do here and what, and you are the people that make it happen. So I just want you to know it's been a tough road for all of us and, um, Excited that it's over. We're going to move on and thank you for everything that you've done. And this is going to be a good new start. Thank you. And I have because I'm just a big fan. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I can know. Uh, appreciate what you've gone all over. Go ahead, and I appreciate what you've gone through. I negotiated for quite a few years for the uh, New Bedford Public Schools against the city. You know, it was not an easy thing to, to negotiate against a public entity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I can appreciate what you've gone through. And I think you've done a good job. Well, there are. Um, just to maybe echo um, some of what Mike said earlier and, and now Reader, um, we certainly appreciate, and there's really no way to <clears throat> Properly, you know, thank you for all you do, especially, you know, last year was just right crazy. Um, so, you know, we do thank you for efforts, um, your efforts. We continue to appreciate the hard work that you do. And, and I, you know, I know now that you've got this off your plate, you'll, you'll focus on the next school year. Um, I want to congratulate you for your professionalism, your diligence, um, your patience. In getting this contract done, and I know it's hard work. I, I served on a negotiating committee. It's it's not fun. It, it's hard, and it's a give and take. And I I think that both sides, um, you know, both management and the the teachers um, acted very professional. We got this done. The first one's always the hardest. Um, after this, we can you know kind of work on the little things that we want to tweak. But getting this first one under your belt is. Um, a substantial milestone and I congratulate you maybe a little prematurely to we vote, but <laughs> um, I congratulate you and, and and as Mike said, we certainly appreciate everything you do in this building and um, you know with, with the new superintendent, a new principal, some of the new staff that we have, this is hopefully going to be a banner year for us. So again, thank you and congratulations. Anyone else have a comment? Okay, at this time, I would ask Maria to take a roll call vote. 
Bergen? Yes. Jay? Yes. Farrell? Yes. Farrell? Yes. The Marlin? Yes. Yes. Motion is approved. We now have a contract. Yeah. It's a line at the bottom. For notes. <laughs> I thought you were going to give us all our own separate pen, like as a kid. My gosh. That would have been nice. Remember it, Amelia. I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. Luck, sir. I knew it was tender. Substitute. Okay, we have now have a signed contract. Congratulations and welcome. Been an experience that we all don't want to go forward with that again, but it is part of negotiations. And it is part of the track. So, once, uh, as Mr. Oliver says, once that initial one is over, things go a lot easier. Is there any other business to come before the committee this evening? We will, uh, we will grab a copy of that. And... <coughs> you having no other business to come before us, a motion be in order to adjourn. So we'll... you. Made a second. On the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thanks for making us.